Hello and welcome. In this quick video, we want to help you get up and running using the menu editor within BuildBox. As you see on the menu editor, we have two major types of nodes. Blue nodes, which are game world nodes, and green nodes, which are UI or user interface screens. Inside the game world nodes, you'll find the level editor, and this is where you can edit the actual gameplay. Inside the UI screens, you'll be able to create your menus. These will be things like your main menu, game over menu, and heads up display that occurs on top of your game, where you'll show score and any buttons needed to play. Adding new nodes is easy. Just right click on the background and select whether you'd like to add a new world or a new UI. Let's look at game worlds. If you single click a blue node, you can highlight the game world. And on the right hand side, you can see all the world's physics. By double clicking the game world, you can design and edit the levels inside. Going back to the menu editor, let's take a look at some of the UI screens. The user interface screens are simply menus. For example, the main menu, the pause menu, and the game over menu are all UI screens. You can single click on a UI screen to edit its properties. In the right hand bar, you can do things like include advertising, assign music to the menu, and then if you double click the UI screen, you can create and edit the content for that menu. On the left hand side, we have several different sections on the asset bar, things we can add into our game menu. In the logic section, we have the event observer. The event observer is used in gameplay UI screens and it will analyze your game and look for situations like reaching the end of the game, collecting a certain number of coins, or the character dying. When activated, it will open up a port on the node, allowing you to route the player to a new menu screen, like a game over screen, or warping them to a new world. Labels can be dragged into your game for tutorials, explanations, in-game texts, and more. And in the font section, you can change colors, shadows, and more for your in-game labels. You can create as many different label styles as you wish to use in your various scenarios. In the control section, you'll find various functions that will allow you to control your game. Placing the character selector in your game lets the user choose from all available characters. The joystick option allows users to have a touch joystick in their game, and you can easily choose how large the touch area is. And the accelerometer allows your users to control their character by tilting a mobile device. Finally, we have buttons. Here you'll find all the buttons you need to use in your game. This includes things like the navigation button. Here you can choose to move between different menus, opening a port, uh, start your game, or use game services like Game Center, sharing, and more. The character button allows you to control different aspects of your character, like moving, jumping, and rotating. The switch button allows you to control the character via a switch. For example, you can have the character change directions every time this button is pressed. The audio button allows you to turn off music or sound effects. The Facebook button allows you to add a Facebook like button in your game. And the URL button allows you to have a link to an external website. Once you drag a function into the scene editor, like this navigation button, you can select it to change its options on the right hand side. Each function will have a different set of options. And for navigation, we have five main sections. We have the transform section where you can change the physical properties of the button the image section where we can choose an image for the button and note that if you don't add an image it becomes an invisible touch button and when a user touches the orange section which would be invisible in the game it will activate the button the function section is where you select the function that this button will have such as whether or not to start the game pause the game or so on the sound section allows you to add various sounds for the button and properties contains various properties for your button, like block touch through, which when disabled allows you to stack buttons and activate all of them with a single press. Or you could also assign a specific keyboard key to the button in the properties section as well. And finally, at the bottom of the editor, we see a timeline. This is where we activate the animated menus, but we'll cover this in a future video. Thanks for watching. 